Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order at two minutes, uh, two minutes after five. Uh, we do have uh, three members of the select board here and uh, Liz Scharf on the Zoom. We have Eric here and we have Dorinda and we have three guests. Would you introduce yourselves, please? John Christian, Matt K. Hutchins. Okay. Michelle Johnston. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. And on the Zoom, we have who, Sarah? On the Zoom, we have um, and Shelly. And Shelly, 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 And here come some members of the fire department. Welcome. Um, so uh, as you can see, looking at the agenda, uh, Sarah and I amended the agenda today in light of the weather forecast and uh, put the planning commission off until our next meeting. And we also put off uh, reviewing the uh, proposals for asbestos abatement for the FEMA buyout at Rich Road. Uh, just to try and uh, try and shorten up the meeting a little bit. Um, other than that, are there any amendments to the agenda? Um, I have one amendment, which is uh, before we start the meet of the minute. I just meeting the meat of the meeting. Uh, I just have a few remarks. So if there is uh, uh, nothing else, I will do my few remarks, and they really. Uh, they really center a fact that I am delighted that Dorinda is, is sitting here this evening and that she uh, made the decision to resent, res, rescind, I'm sorry, I'm mumbling my words, rescind her previous letter. And she's, and she's here and I look forward to uh, working with her and I know the rest of us do as well. And the other thing is I want to have it be noted in the record that None of the confusion, unhappiness that we experienced with regard to her position had anything to do with the work she was doing. There's no question that she does an excellent job as treasurer, and I'd like that to be reflected in the, in the minutes. So that's it. Thank you. Welcome, Dorinda. Um, so with that, we need to approve the minutes of May, June 20th, and 27th. I just forget that May, sorry. I'm sorry? The May is a typo, sorry. Oh, okay, June 20th and 27th, regular select board meeting and special select board meeting. Is there a motion on the regular meeting? Do you want to pair them together? Ah, we'll do them quickly. So we can pair it together. Sure, make the motion. With I think it might not have been at one of them, but I don't remember. Liz can't vote either. I know I came to the special one. It's easier. Okay, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, June twentieth meeting minutes. Second. Victor, Second. thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the uh, June twentieth minutes. Uh, all those in favor. Anybody opposed? You're abstaining. Uh, she was. At, she wasn't at. She either. wasn't here. Okay. Yeah. That's right. You were the world traveler. Peter. Yes. I opposed. I'm sorry. I opposed. Oppose or abstain? Opposed. Okay. Okay. So I'm not sure with that. I'm not sure we can approve the minutes. Can't if it's only two. No. no. Who seconded those minutes? I did. Second the limit of your motion. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so if um, we don't have a third person, I don't think. Well, I think we can do it if we have three, right? But we don't we don't have a third because In favor. Oh, uh we, we do have, have a quorum voting. because we have three voting. Yes. You're right. No, I think we're okay. Okay, Thank you. majority. Yep. Okay. So can we have a motion on the special meeting on the twenty seventh, please. Okay, thank you, Randy. Second it. Okay. Um, 
It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes on the uh, June twenty seventh meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. We've approved the minutes. Thank you. Okay. The big news for this evening: highway report. Reviewing the historic flood, assessing repairs, and assessing required resources. Considering hiring an outside contractor to be in route. What are you missing? The agenda first. Oh, we never approved the agenda. No. I'm sorry. Would you uh, move the agenda, Randy? Uh, yes, I will move to approve the amended agenda as sits in front of us. Second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Keep me on the straight and narrow, Randy. Good job. Um, okay, highway report. Um, I was in the middle of my sentence, but I think to be re reimbursed by FEMA assigned to repair and driveways and town road intersections action likely. So who's up? Very well. Okay. So we're probably all aware center road is passable. Brook Road is accessible by both ends. Uh, East Hill is passable. Shady Rail Molly Supal is passable. Um, Culver is passable from the top, but towards the bottom, it gets pretty rough, um, but cars can make it. Um, can I that, clarify that, Eric? I don't think cars can make it now. They can't. I was just down there. Okay. So we're, we're at just trucks now? Okay. Below right. that, yeah. by Warren Road, we have a slide off where half the road isn't down. That's a major, major issue, which is going to be major. We made a lot of progress in a short amount of time. Um, for the most part, we're just working on getting everything access so that emergency services can get in. Yeah. That's our goal right now. Yeah. We're on uh, Wood and Macy right now. Yeah. So. Okay. And what's the next priority after that? Culver. Okay. Um, you're going to talk about the hiring subcontractor, or are you? Can I just ask one clarifying question about Culver? Because right now you can't go down anymore. Like people were coming up, but now there's like this chasm. So there's no way to get over that giant place that fell, Eric. But just between East Farm and Sarah Seaton's house, I don't know if you know that, but just past the chaplain's house, that yellow house. Um, there, that was a one lane and it was crumbling on both sides. And I didn't, I don't know if you had a chance to add any fill because I'm afraid that any major thing is going to then degrade that and not make that possible for our one access out. I did this morning. Did you that, say that again? Like, no. You said it did this morning. Oh, you, you put something in there this morning. Oh, great. Thank you. If everybody could speak up a little bit, the fan makes it, I think, yeah. a little. Let me shut that Thank off. you. Well, why don't, yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. So, you Go ahead. Started, started to ask me about a contract for Culver? Yeah. Yes. Eric has been talking with John, and John came tonight to give us a presentation of what they would do, for I believe. The, the slide yeah. off on uh, Culver Hill. Culver Hill Road. Yeah. We can mow tomorrow, start on Monday. All right. Um, as Eric and I talked, we put some large stone at the bottom to key it in, and uh, probably bring that stone up to the culvert outlet, and then start putting fill in after that. Um, probably a type three, type four stone to start with, and then behind it we'll probably put a smaller stone, like a type two, just so it. You get a bigger stones, got a lot of void, so you want the stuff to wash through and get a get a uh, sinkhole after. We'll put some fabric up against the bank. Going to have to get in there and cut it down a little bit, bench yourself in. That's a long ways down there. It's a good 25, 30 feet down to the bottom toe of the slope. Right. And I figure it's going to take anywhere from 1,100 to 1,500 cubic yards of material to fill wow. that thing in. So I and, you're, and you're able to get that material now? Yeah. yeah. I've talked yeah. to uh, Northeast. I've talked to uh, Kella. You know, they, they have it, you know, for the bigger stone. Um, and we'll just uh, put in on the surface, put in uh, 
18 inches of dense graded and six inches of that uh, gravel, granite gravel, gra gra granite, gravel. granite gravel. Granite gravel. Yeah. You know, That's the same stuff we've been using on our roads. I don't yeah. know if you guys, I mean, there's, there were trees there before, so I don't know if you guys want to put guardrail up there or not. I haven't gone down there to look at it, but I'm familiar with where it is. I, yeah. I think probably we do need to put it's, it. I don't think you've got enough rock. room to, to put some big rock like you did on the Brook Road there right. years ago. Just because it just you, it you starts right at the edge of the road. Slow, yeah. you're, you're going to be pretty steep on it. Mm -hmm. that, that, that bank is pretty steep as it is. Liz will be relieved to hear that. She doesn't yeah. want anybody flying off Culver Hill Road, right, Liz? I'll tell you what, <laughs> I wouldn't take my truck across that, that uh, crossing there yesterday. Right. No, I wouldn't either. Right. Peter, I'm raising my hand. Yes. Okay. So I talked to John today about this, and I think I sent some emails that Liz has understood. I attended the Vermont, Vermont Emergency Management uh, uh, webinar for the day. I do it every day. Today we ask questions about FEMA reimbursement. Right. You can go through the motions on this, but you got to go through the motions on this, Aaron. You've got to okay. make three calls. You've got to make sure that the person you hire is not debarred according to, to SAM.gov. Otherwise, the FEMA will not reimburse us. Just okay. got to go through the motions. Okay. Do you understand yep. what I'm saying? So we need to get two other. Just easy. even if you don't reach the person, you just document that you did. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. I, I would say phone call and mm -hmm. then shoot follow up by email just that's the best way to document it absolutely but, yeah. we just beam it just we just got to go through the motions we got to follow the, the rules in the yeah. same spot but we don't want to be stuck with a huge bill we can't get reimbursed right thank you <clears throat> i thought people was after want to get the roads open for uh public safety for emergency service and everything else like that i mean we just finished up in westford they want us back for another one uh so the AOT, we're on 14 and 15. They want us to go to two other places tomorrow. It's right. like D&M, and that's it. Well, we'll we'll take care of the take care of the back room stuff. Right. So, Eric, Should you're recommending that we hire them, right? Should I still mobilize tomorrow? Ready to go Monday? Or I would say get there as soon as you can. You know. Yeah, I can make the phone calls and document it. Make okay. some calls tonight. Yep. Can't get a hold of anybody. You can't get a hold of them. Yep. yep. Can't get a hold of anybody. Can't get a hold of them. Those Corys are. Uh, I think they're working Saturday, but maybe you're not interested in working Saturday. What's that? The Corys are open Saturday. Yeah. It, but, but maybe you're not wor interested in working Saturday. They've been putting in quite a week right now. We okay. Pulled out, we pulled off all our pro quite a few of our projects. Okay. To, 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 to do this stuff for the state and the towns. Right. Uh, I mean we. Were, we're going to Barrytown, we're going to uh, Craftsbury Cabot yep. area there. You know? Wow. Yep. I mean, we're all over the place like worship. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, and well, do I we... gave, gave Eric my uh, hourly rates. I don't know if you guys want to. you need a uh, certificate of insurance before we start? Yes. Yes, we do need a certificate okay, of insurance. Send one to Eric. Do you want me to send one to you at the town clerk? Uh, send it to the treasurer. Yeah. The treasurer? What's the yeah. email for the treasurer? Treasurer at middlesexvermont.org. Mm, okay. I'll get that out for a second. Do you have any rough idea? I mean, even rough, rough, rough idea of what you think it's going to be? Take 1,500 yards, multiply it by $45, $50. And you got uh, 20 feet of 24 inch pipe, or 40 feet of 24 inch pipe. Put that by, uh, say, $50 a foot. How many, how many feet? 40 feet. 40. So we're going to have to riprap the inlet of that a little bit. Um, Jesus, the riprap's worth, I mean, just uh, going off the OT prices, you know, it could be $85 a yard. Put in, put in a dive type four stone. Um, Jesus, that's going to be. What is that? Ninety feet long down there. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you figure four feet deep. We're going up about ten feet. You got a you got a calculator? He's working on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's one hundred and thirty-three yards. Yeah. Times eighty-five. You said. Times eighty-five. 
Then you got your fabric there, probably figure a 500 square yard roll at uh, $3 a yard. And I'm trying to figure as high as I can for you guys. Figure, figure the mobilization at uh, seven thousand dollars. You know, you're going to have uh, probably a, a, a three, uh, three twenty-three. Uh, may have a three twenty-one because you're going to have to double bail it. Um, I'll have to have a three fifteen with a with a wrist to do some of the trench work. You're going to have a D four. That's the smallest dozer we've got, and then a vibratory roller. You guys got any waste material anywhere that's uh, got a topsoil and crap in it, so we use a rubber material on the soap to help hold it. So it's a few uh, did ditching from or whatever. 90 we don't have any without spare the, much. We have a, maybe a little bit in the pit, but not, okay. not really a whole All lot. Right. So that's 90,000 90, without the equipment. Without yeah, just well, that, that uh, you're pro probably right. I mean, I'd, I'd figure it high. I mean, yeah. I know we did, we've done it before, and uh, you know, give a higher rate, and then you come in a little bit lower. You know, I mean, I'd, I'd rather be high. No, we're just a, all, yeah. all we're looking for tonight is just a dartboard, okay. a general, general right. idea of what it might be. We know it's a big number. And the, the culvert you want to do on the on uh, Brook Road, I figured out about I throw thirty thousand dollars on it right now. Yeah. You know, well, we we've got the culvert for that. We ended up okay. getting that today. You going to put a thirty inch pipe back in? Thirty six. Thirty six. Yes. Okay, that's the same size that's there. Yep. You want to go to forty eight? Using Biden's money, you might as well build back better. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> that was one of the questions that I had coming into this is yeah. you know areas where we've got failure, yeah. um, looking at upgrading uh, whatever we can to prevent future. I couldn't get forty eight inch if you have sixty feet of it. Well, if you want to sell it to us, we can put it in. Okay. Um, you know, we did an intersection up in East Montpelier, um, Route 14 North and uh, Route 2, okay? Got the whole job done. We had all the recessing done in the uh, pavement for line striping. All we had to do was line striping. We had that storm come, lost the whole job, $380,000 worth of damage. And they had a 36 inch pipe there, 30 inch pipe. They upgraded it to 42 on the outlet. This is the time. I mean, if we're ever going to do it, this is the time to do it. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, the hole is already there. The hole is yeah. already there. I mean, it's deep enough. You got a good place to bury a soul. There's a key of soul in there. <laughs> no, they got it. They got that out, did yeah. they? Yeah. Finally? Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank you. That's so, great. We'll make those phone calls and we'll so I'll move do the paperwork in the start, background. Yep. Start Monday. Have you got a place to put your machines there? Is there a place you can get them out of the way? Yeah, well, you're not you're not going to travel that, that lower part of the road, right? We're going to come in for Route 2. Right. Right? Route 12. Route 12, I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, there's a 2 in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Route 12, yeah. It'll be confusing. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, uh, Good. Well, you're, all set, you're all set, Eric? Yeah. I mean, in terms of this? Yeah. You're all set. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming to our meeting. Well, thank you for the work, fellas. Yeah. You know, Be mother needs a new dress. Go ahead, Randy. Before we move on from this, I just, one of the things that comes to my mind is, you know, all of the, all the responsibility that Eric's got right now. Um, if, if it would warrant having somebody focus on just all the documentation, you know, if we've got to hire somebody to help Eric out managing all of this, I like that idea. You guys want daily reports? I think the more documentation, the better. Right. I mean, from what I've read through some of these emails coming as far as documenting for FEMA reimbursement, yeah. they want GPS locations, photos pre, okay. post, um, I got lengths of road. Yeah, sections of road, how, how far roughly, how you know. So I think, you know, I was just, after reading some of that, you know, your time is better spent out there managing your people and getting progress made out in the field. Um, and I just felt like uh, it's going to be a re reimbursable expense, but looking at having somebody kind of manage the back end for him so he doesn't have to and creating a successful path forward for the town to basically just hand stuff over. Um, I talked with uh, Sven a little bit. Victor probably knows some people um, dealing with the with the state, people that might be willing to do that kind of project management type of stuff. But I think it would be well worth 
looking at trying to pull somebody on to, to give you that. Before. Yeah, yeah. You want to say GPS before and after? I mean, I'd, yeah. I'd have to go back, but yeah, it makes sense. We can do that for you, we'll give you all the data. Yeah. Yes. All right. Every day that um, the keep in mind that your camera, if it's an iPhone and probably with an Android too, has location services already on the camera. If you go under your settings, you make sure yeah. that the location services is tagged to be on. Yeah. And then yeah. it has the GPS coordinate. coordinate. So if we are to do that, we need to do it right away. Sooner rather than later. So how do we accomplish that? Um, do you have, I mean, do we have people in mind? I can get some names. I don't know if Victor has names in mind. Um, you know, I, I talked with Sven. He was, you know, from from his seat, he has, if he doesn't know somebody, he probably knows somebody that knows a firm that's able to do that. Um, but uh, I, can, I can start trying to pull together some names. And I don't, like I said, I don't know if you have some, Victor, through all your connections at the state level or folks that have dealt with this through Irene, maybe. Well, Peter's construction uh, out of uh, Granby, Vermont, uh, has people uh, that are, that they, that they will, I mean, if well, all, was, I'm, all I'm thinking is, if we're gonna do this, we need to have that person on board first of the week. Yeah. Um, so probably. Three names. Got it. I'll, I'll pull together a couple names that I can, and I'll, I'll forward those on to you, Sarah, so you can compile a list of the names and pass that off to Eric or Victor um, so we can, we can try to make that effort move forward. And that should all be reimbursable, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I, would, I would totally assume yep. so. Yep. So I think, we should, I think we should give Eric the authority to hire that person, consulting with, with you and Victor. We don't need to have a special meeting to do that. I don't feel like we do. Fine. Unless, unless somebody else, you okay with that, Liz? Yeah. I just want to get our ducks in a row and get moving on this. And the longer we wait, the harder it's going to be. And there's nothing worse than trying to put information together after the fact. Absolutely. Is that, uh, so you'd be looking for somebody for full time for a few weeks? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't even know as if I understand what it's going to take to make that happen. But I think, you know, uh, it's probably coordinating with uh, the road commissioner and the road foreman and the contractors at hand. I've got to believe it's at least half to three quarter time. I would imagine. Uh, maybe it is full time. I don't know. Yeah. There are going to be a lot of. There are going to be a lot of moving parts to this. Yeah. So, yeah, I, maybe it is full time for a few weeks. Yeah. Okay. Want to make that motion, Victor? Uh, yes, I move that uh, we're looking to and to hire a uh, person to do the administrative work for uh, uh, for for the road crew and the work being done uh, under FEMA. On behalf of the town, yeah. On behalf and this of would town. be if we're going to do this. My recommendation is they do all the FEMA stuff, not just this project. Yes, I would. I, I'd be fine with that. For, yeah. Yep. Excuse me. Because Eric doesn't have the time to do it. Absolutely. So if we're going to do it, let's have somebody do it and do it right the first time and get our money on time and all that, right? Yep. There's a lot of work to do out there. Yep. Yes, indeed. So I think it's going to be ongoing for a while. We'll just have to see how it goes. Is there a second to that motion? Not yet. I'll, I'll second that. Okay, so the motion is, I'm going to restate the motion the best I can. The motion is to hire somebody to manage the uh, flood recovery work and the FEMA paperwork associated with it so we can be properly reimbursed. Could we use That's the it. word, instead of somebody, a consultant? I did administrator. How about administrator? Sure. Be a consultant. Yeah. Administrative yeah. consultant? Sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to everyone? Yep. Okay, with that, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. That was aye or opposed? No, it was an aye. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, I think that's I think that's good. I have one other 
question on the road. So you're talking about hiring somebody. What are we going to do about all these driveways, I guess, is the question. Liz had, an had a uh, uh, thought on that uh, today. I don't know if she wants to share that. You want to share that now? Um, sure, yeah. So I got in touch with the League of Cities and Towns earlier this week because I, as I'm sure all of you have gotten calls from neighbors and we in particular on Culver Hill Road lost a lot of um, driveways, um, the culverts, of, as well as a lot of the road itself leading from the culver, as we've seen. Um, and so I reached out to the League of Cities and Towns and someone got back to me and they read our highway ordinance and they said, um that our highway ordinance you know states that the homeowner is is owns the culvert and is responsible for the culvert maybe it just says they're responsible for the culvert which in normal circumstances is true so for example if i kind of messed up my culvert because i was driving my tractor all over it or you know it gets clogged you know we're the people who go in and take care of that right like we don't ask the town to come in and take care of that um, but she thought there was a case because all of these culverts are in the town's right of way, presuming that the driveway goes directly attaches to the town road, um, that it would be wise for us to um, to hire a, cons a contractor to do the, the driveway repairs for those driveways that connect the main roads or, or town owned um, class three roads. Um, and have that bundled up into the FEMA request. Um, and, you know, Vic and I talked today about um, the, I mean, and really it was the argument for that is that the town really would probably prefer to have these done correctly, right? Not just willy nilly someone going in with their tractor and. That's, that's uh, a huge part of this for me is this is a chance to fix some of those driveways. Right. Which causing us right. headaches right. for years. Exactly. So, so we know that some of the culverts are fine, like mine was totally fine. It wasn't clogged. It could be used again. Um, but that this is an opportunity. But like my neighbor down the road has a rusty old metal one that was falling apart and failing to begin with. So this is an opportunity to replace the culverts that need replacing, um, have one person do it well, um and um and then bundle that into the FEMA. She stated that for individual homeowners like me to navigate the individual assistance program for FEMA is going to be extremely burdensome and complicated for people. Um, so I just want to state as an example, just as we're as we're communicating with townspeople, if we decide to go this route and hire a contractor who will come and do people's driveways. Again, it will be triage. Those who you know literally can't get out, those who maybe are elderly or need you know whatever, um, and that um, people like me who just did it because we had a literally a newborn baby that had to go to the hospital. So we we hired someone to come in and do like a one lane for us so that we could get the baby to the hospital. Um, our driveway is not done. It's a temporary fix. We assume that eventually the town will get to it, but we're not going to get reimbursed by the town for that money that we paid. And if I want to, I can try to do my own reimbursement with FEMA, but I'm not going to bother. Right. So oh. I just, yeah. So anyway, so I think that that's where, where we should head. I think it's, this is a much greater thing than like, oh, my culvert's kind of messed up. I'm responsible for it. This is like where the roads are gone and and this is an opportunity for us to fix it, make our roads right, not have, you know, fair weather people thinking they know how to do this and doing it all wrong and causing further damage to the road. So I have a couple of questions. Um, if someone like you has spent money to not redo your driveway up the hill, but to make it so you can get in and out of your driveway, why wouldn't we be willing to, assuming they have pictures and documentation and all the stuff, why wouldn't we be willing to submit that to town? Maybe you would. 
maybe you would, but I think that um, what we what we're trying to and and here's the thing: you're going to have to continue to work on my driveway eventually, or this contractor is going to eventually have to because it only has one of the two culverts in. And the other and, part. And that. The other part of my question is. I think what we need to do is, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but not try and do final repairs initially. I think we need to get out there, give people access to their houses and their property, and then go back and finish up and do the proper job. Now, I don't want to do it twice. You know, you kind of got to walk a line. But if we can, if we can get the culvert in and just make it so they can get in and out and then go back and finish it up later, I think. Because otherwise, I mean, I think there are hundreds of driveways. I, I counted just driving around for half an hour, I counted 75 driveways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you going to repair the whole driveway? No. Just no. No. Area? no, the culvert area where it accesses the... Yeah, the rest of it's got to be... And this is not like my neighbor up the road who is, has his own driveway off of our private driveway. We're not fixing that, right? This is literally... No those that are attached and in the town right of way. Um, and I, I think um, that you're right, Peter, that, you know, sort of doing these temporary fixes um, is, is a good way to go with the intention of making them right eventually, right? Um, and I don't know, Sarah, that's going to be a question whether or not, I mean, certainly we're going to keep our receipts, we have pictures and everything, whether or not we can bundle that into the request is another, I don't know the answer to that question. Hey, can I say something? Yes. So obviously this is a, a, an issue with almost every town that's going to experience extreme flooding. So you know, before we do this, it would be a good idea for the Eric and, and Vic to contact VTrans and find out what other towns are doing about this. And you just have to get the message across that if you've got a crappy driveway, like my neighbor across the street has a really bad driveway, you know, fixing that junction is not going to happen before you fix your driveway. But there's a lot of misunderstanding going on. I'm getting emails from people saying, look at my really bad driveway. You know, what? You own it. They own it. Yeah, I know. And it's also kind of affecting the road. So there's a little communication here. But otherwise, when I talk to female... No, we got to be careful. we got to be very careful how we roll this out because people are... Correct. But when I talk to FEMA today, FEMA's number one concern is, or Ben's number one concern is, fix everything you can now, right away, as soon as possible. You, you, they're going to give you a little bit of a waiver to, for the, to get, you don't know, send out RFPs, just get out there and fix stuff. If you have to hire people, do it. Get it done. That's what they want. So you guys are on the right track with this. So the question is... Sandy, Sandy has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Sandy? Thank you. I'm wondering, is there an opportunity for the town to have larger culverts put in place? Because some of the culverts going into the from on driveway seem to be very small and cannot accommodate the volume of water that's been coming in. And the quick answer to that is yes. I mean, we want to we want to right size. We're going to do this. We want to right size the, that. That again is the reason for us to manage this. Yeah. So we can do it do it correctly, where there need to be bigger culverts, bigger culverts, et cetera. Yes, I would say. That's yes, Sarah. Very much. The minimum size that's allowed is 15 inch. Yeah. There's no more 12 inch anymore. Yeah. Did you hear that, Sandy? So yeah, the whole advantage of doing this and going out on a limb a little bit, assuming we're going to get you know we're going to get reimbursed. Um, is so that this can be done correct. I mean, we have problems all over town with driveways all the time, where people have put in culverts incorrectly, people have built driveways incorrectly. This will give us a chance to build a dip so the water runs off to the side, doesn't run into the road, have the proper culvert there. And it's uh, nothing, nothing's going to be forever, but yes, this would make a big difference. So who or what group of people would we hire to do that work, gentlemen. I mean, there's enough work across the, the town where obviously wow. Eric, Eric will need to be dealing with multiple contractors, you know, depending I on the I would think it would need to be multiple contractors, Absolutely. yeah. Yeah, but, yeah I mean, uh, are you going to hire one contractor as suggested or are you going to hire multiple? The only trouble is somebody's got to manage multiple. Is that something that goes to this person that we're... I mean, ideally, anything that that is, is covered FEMA. under this FEMA, you know, yeah. uh, project, if you will, would run through 
the two of you and this project manager or administrator, whoever, whatever, whatever you want to call, call them. But ideally, between the three of you, everything would kind of funnel through. And I mean, that's where, you know, with just understanding the field work that you've got ahead of you and, and getting this tied in, you know, um, you really need to be able to rely on that person to work with some of those subcontractors directly, I think. I mean, there's, there's a handful of people that probably would do it in the town. Um, I, think, I think we need to hire two or three, the big, at the, at the, assuming, they're, assuming they're one or two man shows. We're not hiring somebody who has a crew and multiple machines. The, um, got Ray Hickory and John Pickard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I and they do a lot of them. Vocals. And they know how to do them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? You guys know the capability of those people. Mm -hmm. they're, they're capable of that. Yep. 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 Same rules apply. Yep. Yeah. Oh, very contact. In some cases, they've already done some of that work yeah. in terms of right. emergency repairs. You know, and, and it, there's nothing saying that you can't reach out to the three or four and hire three or four of the people that you reach out to depending on their capacity so right now ray hickory is pretty busy with the pond for the next few weeks and uh, yeah but we can reach out uh, certainly there is two or three people the problem of not having it done or already started now is the the uh, we couldn't we didn't they couldn't get material That's first right. and then they couldn't get the material if they got it to where they wanted it. Oh, I know. But that's left. That's that's getting better. Yeah. Well, the first thing, the first thing is just to have people be able to get in and out of their driveways. And the people who have to reconstruct their driveways, they're going to have to work on that themselves. But right. They can that, park that whole idea of uh, oh, excuse me. No, go ahead. Isn't that the whole idea of of getting FEMA? FEMA wants you to do it. Uh, not where they they just want it. Want you to get so people can get out and out of their driveway people can get up the road and then we can come back and fix it right it's not right? finished it's not finished that's, grade that's that's what i've read and that's what the I way read. i've understood it yep. right that's the yep. question does the yes. have a spec for how to put it in the culvert yes like you yes well, it, it's it's well, part of our uh, you know, driveway a little permit dip before if you're your driveway's above the road, you're supposed to have a dip. Before Correct. You. I'm like the only guy in town that has that. So right. So many driveways. I've been <laughs> like mine in 50 years ago. Well, that's, the, that's exactly what I'm talking about, that so by doing this and controlling this process, we can fix that. You have to follow this. Yeah. Instead of like they're good, but, you know, this thing, this, this is the new normal. With all this rain and global warming, you got the opportunity to fix it like you talking about fix it right and it should be specced so there's no question yep. on how to put it in and someone can come and check it hey you did that wrong i know those guys are great and i'm not taking anything away from them but no i agree and i and i and i would just make a side comment which is having been driving around the last few days and looking at some of the places where we have ditched and especially where we put in that ditch stone boy did that ditch stone work Mm -hmm. It did, and I know that's and I know that's expensive to put it in. But man, oh man, there was I couldn't see any excess washing or erosion or anything. It worked like a champ, and we've spent a lot of money, a lot of money doing that. And boy, it worked. Mm -hmm. And also some of the places where we have put in larger culverts, they didn't fail this time. Mm -hmm. So you know, it pays back dividends in the long run. So I think we need a motion to do that. Okay. Did you just? Oh, let's do, let's do the motion. I had another question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Right in front of my house, uh, 131 East Hill Road, there's a big culvert that goes underneath the road. Yep. And there's a big deep spot where the water pools. And over the years, that thing's filled up with sand. Several trees were cut because they fell across the road, and there's stumps in there. There's trees in there. And water was going over the road this time. So, I mean, that has to be looked at, too. Yeah. For mm -hmm. the town culvert. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, there's, <laughs> you know, the good news is right now, nobody's going to complain if you're, you're pulling trees out of brooks and <laughs> streams. This is the time to do it. We did a lot of that in Irene. We drove right down the brook road, right down the brook with a skitter and cleaned out a lot of those trees. 
and the fishing was good the next year. Yeah. <laughs> Did that do so anyway, we've, we've got an opportunity to make things better, but in the short run, we need to get things so people can get in and out and all around. Victor. So the motion would be to hire um, contractor, contractor or contractors that are willing to um, work on uh, driveways to right. get uh, to get access for the uh, for uh, residents to to uh, to access the town highway. Yeah. Can we uh, be specific about class three roads? Is where it it's sounded like that was a pretty important distinction. I don't uh, think making so. Making this as clear. Why as wouldn't we do? Why wouldn't we do a class two or a class four? Oh, anything a above a class three or above? Class four. Um, we have I to think we would do class four. Okay. okay. So wait a minute. Can we also say um, we also say uh, within the town's right of way, so that people aren't thinking that we're going to be doing their because a lot of people have shared driveways and their other and then their driveways are off that. I, I think that's, that's a good idea. right. That's a good idea. We can say that uh, rather than within the within the town right of way, so that the people can access their town problem. highway. Yep. And yeah. that the that the work uh, will at best uh, best po uh, best management practice to uh, adhere to the state of Vermont uh, drive typical. For a second, TA thirty one. Okay. Seconded by Randy. Thank you, Randy. Okay, all in favor of that motion? Yeah, Liz. Okay. I, oh, you're saying I already? And I tried to second it, but I'm saying I. I. <laughs> okay. Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Any opposed? Done. Thank you. I really think that I really think that's the right thing to do. Hey, um, yeah. can I just just tell you how I phrase this motion so that if that's okay with you? Go ahead. Yes. Okay. So uh, hire contractors to repair driveway connections within the town's right of way. Well to allow for egress and ingress to town highways adhering to the state of Vermont specifications. Does that sound right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Should we say repair including culverts, just to make it clear we're doing the culverts? Yeah. And how about connections think, and culverts? I think so. Yeah, I think so too. I just don't want people to think their driveways are going to get repaired. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yay. Done. Well, wait anything wait. else, oh, gentlemen? Yes. We need to do tonight. Yes, Sarah. Well, I mean, on the, with regard to the roads, I mean. Yeah, the road crew. Um, so I'm getting a lot of questions about uh, trash removal for people cleaning out their uh, road, their houses on Three Mile Bridge, uh, etc. And I talked to the state of Vermont today, and they said. Any debris left in the town's right of way is the town's responsibility. I know this isn't at a burden for you guys, but I think you probably remember Tropical Storm Irene. And I don't know if we're looking at hiring another contractor, but I told people that you guys were meeting tonight and you would discuss this. Pete Ainsworth has said in the past during Tropical Storm Irene, uh, the road crew said, dump your, people can dump the stuff on the lot across from his property. And he's fine with that this if you want to do it with this flood um, because the road crew is busy with other things you can come back and pick it up later that takes a death i just want to bring it so can you well, i think probably we need to do that the question is whether the road crew has the capacity <laughs> capacity to do that along with everything else well, or we need right. to hire casella or somebody to come and pick up that stuff yeah. Can you repeat that, Sarah? That's all I raised my hand for. I just oh. didn't get that very last part. So I'm Pete sorry. Ainsworth said, called up and said, in Tropical Storm Irene, uh, he, the road crew asked if they could, if people could dump their stuff on this lot across from him, and he said that's fine. Instead of people putting it in the front of their yards like they're doing in Montpelier right now, and it all looks like a big rummage sale. So. Yeah, Randy. So I just want to, I want to understand the ask. Is it? To be able to remove trash that has floated down through the flood zone and been deposited on their property or their personal belongings that have been damaged by the flood. That is the issue for you guys to decide. Right. 
And the state, I asked them the, the state that today, they said anything left of the town's right of way is the town's responsibility to clean up. That was their answer. That's all I got. So it's going to be primarily on Three Mile Bridge Road and some on Route 2. That's and maybe Lower Sunnybrook? Lower Sunnybrook. Yeah, and Lower Sunnybrook, yes. Well, I mean, I, I think it opens it up to anybody who's had water intrusion to their buildings. You know, I'm thinking about Center Road. There were folks that were talking about having water in their basements. And, yeah. and so it really opens it up to um, anybody that's had water intrusion into their basement. And quite honestly, how do you police that anyway? But um, I think it's an important distinction on, on what's included in this. So I just think we should be clear on what we... I know, but it's pretty tough to say to somebody whose basement filled up with water that you're not going to pay for their stuff, whereas if it came in from the river, you're going to pay for their stuff. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be saying that to someone on the phone, I could tell you that. I think if it's in the town right away, we clean it up, and we can decide whether we're going to clean it up ourselves or whether we're going to hire Casella to come in and grab it. So I, can I just ask something? I'm a little confused. Are you saying that people are... Like, I would never expect the town to take my garbage from my no, flooded no, house. Nor, would, nor are we willing to take your, your garbage. Flood damaged property. Stuff, whatever it is. Water damaged stuff as a result of the flood. So the old couch, which was down in the basement rec room that probably now weighs 1,000 yeah. pounds because it's sopping wet, that's eligible. Your, your uh, food scraps for the last two weeks are not eligible. Okay, but I guess I would never have known that I, I would never have put my stuff outside on the side of the road. I would hire a dumpster to come and take it. But you're saying we are now allowing everyone to, we're going to tell everyone that they can just put their garbage on the side of the road from their flooding? Stuff that is damaged as a result of the flood. Okay. But look at what's going and on. And this is the thing. This, okay. I just didn't know that existed, that I could have the town pick up my stuff that was damaged by a flood. Well, you're up on the hill. You're not supposed to have flood damage. Well, I did have flood damage, but I'm not going to put it out on the side of the road. Well, let's not publicize it. I was going to say it. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Just do it. I, I think when we, write, when we, we advertise that, I think we're going to ask people to do it on an honor system. We have to. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go down and pick through and decide what's eligible and what isn't. I can tell you that. We're going to pick it up, whatever it is, if we do this. I, I would suggest if the board is going to support this to um, have folks be responsible for getting it to whatever site is deemed, if it's off from this piece of property that this person's allowing and not task the road crew with picking stuff up off the side of the road and loading personal belongings into their dump truck or whatever, and then having to transport it. Um, that would be my- that would I think be that's my gonna be, yeah, Dorinda. Should you think about getting a uh, roll off put onto that site so it actually goes into something instead of just being dumped on the ground. And well, pick it up in the so here's so here's what I was thinking. You know, we have one roll off the town garage, we have one down on Three Mile Bridge, and maybe one somewhere in Route Two if we can find it and say we've provided three roll off dumpsters for you to put your stuff in, and then let Casella haul them away. And I don't know where we do it on where we do it on Route Two, but there must be some place. Maybe down by Shady Row or something. Like that's Route Twelve, Route Two. You're saying down here. Yeah. yeah. They could get it down. What about to the fire the department parking lot? They could get down to the junction, though. I would think if they're on Route Two with it, because that's where Pete's Land is. I yeah. think You need like one on Twelve side, one on this side. If there's damage over on Route Twelve, mm. Shady Row area. You know, that's, I don't know. Huh? There's, there's damage in Putnamville. Putnamville, yeah. yeah. Something like that, and then. So probably four roll-offs is what we're thinking? Yeah, three at least. One, one down there, 
one at the town garage, one on the other side down by 12 somewhere. And if you wanted a fourth, you know. Well, I would think if we had one over by Putnamville, one on Three Mile Bridge, and one at the town garage. I, I, I think it should be in Putnamsville, though. Yeah. I don't think we want to stick one out, say, by the, uh, by the access area to to no. the race no. dam. Agreed. Listen, I can, I, can tell you, I, I can tell you, somebody who is a big user of Casella in downtown Montpelier, and I believe I have 12 dumpsters down there, there have been times when I think I'm doing half the trash for the whole city of Montpelier with my dumpsters. Mm -hmm. And we've tried locking the dumpsters, we've tried signs, we've tried everything. And if you do any of that stuff, all the people do is pile their stuff up next to the dumpster, and that makes it worse. So anyway, there's no, there's there's no, no perfect guarantee. answer to that. Right. If, you put the, if you put the thing there, we'll say we'll keep it there for, what do you think, two weeks? It's plenty. Unless they're full before that. I'm sorry, Eric? Unless they're full before that. Yeah. Well, then they have to, then we've got to call Cassell and have them come dump I, I them back. I think a two-week span for folks to be able to get their stuff out and get them to these dumpsters is adequate time. And then once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. So I will make the motion. I don't make very many motions, but I'll make the dumpster motion. <laughs> <laughs> Three dumpsters for a period of two weeks, which are designated for flood damaged waste, whatever that is. Um, one to be in Putnamville, one to be at the town garage, and one to be uh, wherever Pete Ainsworth designates in his spot down there. Is there a second to that motion? Second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay, we're, sp we're spending money like we have it, but this is the time to do it. I can't take it with you. Well, I think people will really appreciate that. Thank you very much. That was, that was question number two all week. Yep. Can I ask one more question? Um, okay, go ahead. Do we already have any independent contractors working on roads? We do. Okay. Yes. Because... Um, can we get a list of those because we have to have the certificate Absolutely. insurances in place? Yes. Certainly can. Great, thanks. Don't, don't, yes. Other than what Sarah said, don't they, for the town, don't they have to have some, some paperwork in? Right, that's what, yes, that's what she's talking about. Okay. Yeah, so, but I don't know if we, I know the usual people we have in place already, so we don't have to. Those, but if that's who other, we have. Okay. Um, what about Daniel? I don't know if there's one on place for him. Is he doing any work? I saw his truck on one of the roads. So Lower side book, I think. Lower side book. Yeah, he's not doing work for us. He's not. Okay, so that's my question. I don't know he's who's doing work for the town right. no. and who's not doing work for the town, and I just want to make work. Yeah, there's so stuff going on right all over the place. All yep. over the place. So. Um, Please. Yeah, if we can just whenever, yeah. but I think like we have Johnny's, we have, you know, Jason. Ray's, we have all of those. So. Do you have Jason? Yeah. Uh, I believe we have Jason. Yeah, he just did year. the culverts for yeah, us. Yeah, we so. have Jason's. Right. Yeah. And I think that's about all we, we have working for us right okay. now. Okay, that's all I wanted yep. to make sure. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to implement this? The, you're talking about the dumpsters? Where are they going to go? Um, well, it sounds like two locations are pretty set. It's yeah. just the Putnam location that we've got to find a suitable spot for, right? Yeah. Is Norton Bridge still closed? No. Nope. Is it open now? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think no. it was last time I saw it was kind uh, of That's not a good still. area. I don't know. I wonder if there's someone who'd be willing to have it put in their driveway. Yeah. Have, uh, I have some people like, who have been flooded severely, and I can ask them if they wouldn't mind. Carol okay. Kelly, yep. Yeah. So. Okay. Hey, Nancy, uh, would, you, would you mind making that call, Sarah? No, no, no. I'll call her tomorrow. Uh, okay. I just, um, my only recommendation is that we maybe not advertise this too wisely, that when people call the town clerk's office and say, are you guys doing anything about dumpsters, we can just say, instead of making a big proclamation about it, how it sounds. That's a great idea. Yeah. 
I know what you're saying, but I hate that. I mean, if we're gonna if we're gonna do it, I want people to use it. I, I don't think, want them to be piling their stuff up beside the road and expecting us to pick it up. So I know this results to, in the more phone calls, which you're already flooded with. But maybe just advertising, if you've got flood damage property, um, call the town clerk. Bingo. Perfect. Okay. And then, okay. and then they've got to make the effort to, to get to you to find out about what resources are available. Yeah. Um, the, the other question that I had um, is we haven't tasked anybody with reaching out to Casella's or to designate the locations. And I just want to make sure we're all clear on who's tackling that and not assuming I'm that happy to somebody call, is. I'm happy to call Casella. I'll communicate with you, Sarah. Well, I'm not working tomorrow, so okay. I'm still call Carol Maloney. Well, I'll communicate with you somehow. <laughs> uh, that, I'll call Casella. I just want to say there's a big storm warning coming in like very soon where they're saying like one inch size hail and for some reason to go to the lowest room in your house, yep. an interior room or the lowest floor of the building. There were some tornado warnings sure. on the Western slopes. Okay, because the it, locations impacted include Middlesex, according to this warning. What time? It's coming. It's it's in Hinesburg right now, moving 45 miles an hour um, right this moment. So I think very soon. We need to be quick. Okay. Somebody should also contact Pete Ainsworth. I'm not I sure. Yeah, I'll contact. I don't mind calling. So I'll call sure Casella. Good with the. And I'll call Pete. What about that area where you got the dry hydrant? Is that, that Stephenson's? Yeah. Would that oh, work? Down by Dubois. Right, it's a Long. gate there. It yeah. belongs to Dubois. Yes. Guys, okay, guys. We gotta we gotta move now. One other thing on the road. Guys. Yes. Shady Rail pavement. Some yeah. of it has been undermined. Oh. The new. So we've got to peel it up. Yeah. Well, or at least that section at least it's under only one level instead of where they doubled it up already okay well we got to do whatever we got to do okay. right yeah just letting you know okay thank you okay setting the tax rate dorinda okay i gave you the sheet for what i'm yep. suggesting um currently and this kind of ties in with the treasurer's report um currently this is where we stand as of right now with um, where we ended up for year end. I know yep. There's still money that, that yep. still bills to come in. Um, so that will change a little bit. But, um, but I think we're okay. The other thing last year, we not knowing what was going to happen, um, we added uh, a penny or two extra to the... Gentlemen. No, no. Okay, we ahead, added a penny or two to the um, tax rate to cover some unknowns last year. Um, we didn't have to dip into that. So with all that extra, I believe that we can set our town portion at uh, just under three cents. We all know the state came in with an 11 uh, 0.1184 for the homestead tax rate. Yep. I mean, a point, yeah, 1.7045 for the yep. homestead and 1.6309 for non residential. So, added together, we have a non residential rate of 2.3248 and a residential rate of 2.4468 which keeps us under a 15 cent increase to the residents. I only have one question, and Good. it's the same question I ask every year. Yeah. Which is, uh, we increased our fund balance by a pretty substantial amount, in part due to that extra, extra right. money we collected. Right. Um, is this a time to use a little of that fund balance? Well, that goes to the next part of what oh, I was okay. going to talk about. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, with all this money that we're going to have to put out before we get any FEMA money, we're going to need a fund balance. Yep. Um, I don't doubt so that. So I would not suggest that we use any of that right now. Okay. Um, I think based on a, over a 10% increase in the budget that, you know, to only incur less than a $0.03 cent 
tax rate is probably a reason. Well, once again, thing. it's the schools that are. It's the school enough. that's yeah, doing right. it. It's not the town. Right. When you say increased, you mean three cent increase, right? The, the town portion increased less than um, three cents. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so. what we can tell. That's what we can tell our uh, voters. Yeah, I agree because as much as all these bigwigs who are coming up from Washington is are telling us they're going to turn the faucet on, we know it doesn't get turned on that quickly. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Liz, you're good. I can't find my family. I think they're out wandering the roads, and so I'm a little worried. But otherwise, I'm fine. You don't have any questions about the tax rate, was my question. No. Okay. Are you willing to make a motion? You're the tax rate lady. I'm the tax rate lady. I'll move that we accept Dorinda's um, tax rate of whatever we said, 15 cents. Whatever the motion is, I'll make the motion. Well said. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second it. I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Victor. All in favor? Guys, that's one of the most important things we do every year, and uh, I appreciate the work you did, Dorinda, and also your your comments make good make good sense to me. I was, uh, and I and believe me, I know there's more to come, but I was I was very pleased to uh, to see that uh, to see that year end report. Um, do you have anything else for us? Not for the treasurer report. No. Okay, let's see if we can quickly consider options for purchasing a used rescue vehicle with 135,000 for 135,000 from the North Hard Park uh, using ARPA funds. Action, action likely. Um, I was thinking about this earlier today, and I was thinking, oh my God, you know, is this the right time for us to be doing this when we've got everything we're 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 facing here? But in thinking about it, and I've been thinking about it all day, I still think this is a good opportunity to solve a problem for the fire department. And I also uh, noticed that I think for the first time in history, the fire department budget is underspent. So there's, in a way, a little bit of money there to help us with this. So I'm supportive of, I'm supportive of doing it. And I, uh, we've got members of the fire department here to answer questions. If anybody has any questions, or I can try and answer. Um, I have a question. Yeah. I just wanted to verify. We're sitting on three hundred forty-five thousand dollars of the remaining ARPA funds that we haven't already uh, pushed out. Is that correct? That's, That's about correct. right. Yes. Yes. And somebody from the fire department. Uh, has looked this vehicle over thoroughly. Jeff and I both have. Yeah. It's questions I mean, that I have. Uh, can I just clarify, Randy, when you said that we have pushed out, you mean that we've like reserved? We don't have only one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars left. No, we have three hundred and forty-five thousand dollars remaining okay. currently. But we haven't committed. We've yeah. we've spent one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Okay. So looking at. Looking at this, it would leave us with two hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars of ARPA money that we could still allocate to other uses. Okay. Anything else, anyone? Dorinda's got a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Dorinda. I'd like to make the re recommendation that we don't use the ARPA funds at this time and let it ride for the year we pay for it with the money we have in our fund balance. And maybe by the end of the year, we'll have enough that we don't have to take out a loan or anything, or we'll still have the opera funds we could dip into. Can we, if we use the fund balance for this and decide at a later point in time, is that an allowable expense of the ARPA to reimburse for that? Well, we don't have to say what we've used our performance are until next March. So I think I would just let's I think you're better off not saying you're using it and use some of this money like we did when we bought the pickup truck. And then we can always make the decision 
to put it in ARPA. For, and yeah. you pull the okay. rest out of ARPA. I like that. All right. I like I'm that. I'm good with that. Keep right, your up, Liz. For clarification, you're talking about using all the money? Um, in, uh, Just uh, buy it outright out with of ARPA. With town funds. With town funds, okay. Yeah. I would, uh, and if nobody has any other questions, I'd make that motion to use town funds to purchase this um, vehicle from North Hyde Park for $135,000. We second that. Okay, thank you. Is there anything else we need to know about this fire department before we do this? So, the one thing on the truck has the lawyers. We need to put a deposit down do some type of paperwork. Does a lawyer come up with something of that? I mean, I can call them tonight and say, hey, we're, it's, we're gonna give you 135 when your truck's available. And they were saying we'd like at least a deposit down. Yep. Do you know what they're looking for for a deposit? I don't know. I, I would think 10% is is that unrealistic for? I mean, we can do. That. I don't know. We it's don't, fine. I, I, don't, I, I can ask them what they want for a deposit and get back. What, 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 you, just because I was I always like to take the high ground, so I would say, is a 10% deposit okay? Rather than if they say what they want for a deposit, I'd say 50% if it was me. <laughs> Are we getting it what, in September or something? We're, their truck build comes in, in August. They're, they're progged at a 60-day um, truck build. So if we're lucky, the end of September, October time frame. Is what now, how do we protect ourselves in terms right. of so right. that would be some in, in the thing if, if it, something happens to it? You know, in the, the, We'd have to negotiate. Well, we would have it if it gets gets in an accident before we take transfer. Then I, I would well, I whatever would it, whatever it is that it's in substantially the same condition right. as it is when we give them the deposits. So if the transmission blows up, if the engine blows up, if they roll the damn thing over, whatever it is, and that's that's, well, that's rough. I would look at the lawyer we put together. I would I would say something to you know include a satisfactory inspection yeah. of the vehicle before. And, and I have no I have no doubts that they if anything happens they're going to tell us about it and that they're. I know, but we just got to. I know, and that's why I said that. I don't want to, I don't want to get in a a, 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 right. a fight with them when they say. Oh, you know, the bad news is we just heard it needs a new transmission, you know, or whatever yeah, it is. That's, that's what I'm, I'm all fine with that, and I'm sure they will. I'm sure they want to, want to do that as well. So, uh, so we don't have we don't have a standard. Per no, we don't buy enough stuff or sell enough stuff to have a standard purchase agreement, do we? We could probably copy one from. No, we bought enough equipment. We could probably modify something we mm -hmm. bought. Okay. And maybe make that. Work. Let's not scare them to death, though. No. Well, <laughs> I mean, something there we probably could do. I just, I just want enough language to, to protect ourselves. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the other thing I have that's, that's as a result of our weather thing, um, the fire department is getting used more for operations. Do we, do we just finish okay. this before right, we go on to another topic? So I'll amend my motion to include a. 10% deposit along with a satisfactory uh, purchase and sales agreement that includes uh, a clause to require a uh, satisfactory mechanical inspection of the vehicle prior to uh, final payment. Uh, I will die. Uh-oh. It's plugged in, but that end isn't plugged in. No, over here. It's not connected to anything. Oh. What happened? It's not connected to this. I think our our creative wiring here was. <laughs> so that goes. That's right. It should be. Yeah. It just that ends. I think it went down from the council. Did the computer die or did the? Hour? The computer died. Okay. The computer died. Oh, because we, it wasn't. It wasn't. Oh, I see. Okay. Shoot. I'm sorry. Well. Well, that's the way that goes. Can we bring it back? No. Once it reboots. Once it reboots, yeah. Well, let's wait to vote till it reboots. How about that? How about we just, the storm is getting really, really close. Uh, and, you're, and you're on and you're recording, right? Yeah, they nice just don't have video. They could have audio. If you turn your audio on. I don't have, I don't have a microphone. Is there any retrofitting for this vehicle after you get it? Just, just, just going to put our radio on it. And it's, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's because they have entirely different frequencies. Yeah. Okay. Let's bring this back. 
and the, and the name on the side. Right. Minor. Yeah. Very minor. Because all the all the lights and sirens yeah. are Yeah. Okay. No. Because I know only by a truck, then we have to go through all the bells and whistles. No, they already did the hard part. Okay. They're going to think we got struck by lightning. I know. <laughs> this right is We're not too far from it. Well, not here I know, right? But it looks like it's splitting on the radar. On the radar, yeah. That's what I. It's Peggy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be good. Why is this okay. off? Yeah. Because everything, I think, just kind of. This should be on. Well, this this should be on. Right now, it's just all we need is the TV on, and I don't know why the TV is clear. Here, here it comes. Eight, nine o'clock is when it's going to be really bad. Okay, let's get the hell out of here. All right, okay, I'm working on it. I hate driving through storms. Hey, is it okay hey, to you drive? You know what? Why don't you leave and I can turn everything off? No, 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 no. No, I can do I'm not going to be a baby. Oh, no, my. No, Stalling <laughs> final <laughs> updates. <laughs> Seriously. I'm not that you're a baby. It's a two hour I'm update. Happy to turn everything off. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're I think we're done with the Zoom, unfortunately. So let's let's vote on the motion. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Liz would be in favor, I'm sure. We've, but we've, got, we've majority. got three. We've, we've got, got majority, majority here. So, so boys, you're good. The other thing the other thing that the fire department is concerned about is getting a water softener in down at the fire department as soon as possible, which is estimated to be how much? Forty six hundred. And we've, we've been in operation center, this is our third time, and we're running the risk of opening again tonight, and we need to have potable water in there. And we, yep. were, we, we did have people, it was a shelter for people that got in an accident on center at midnight, Monday, Tuesday. So that's, that's a, a water softener, yep. here we go, and a purification system to make the water potable. Just a water softener. Yep. And then there's a filter. It's $4,600. Welcome back. That's installed. Bye. We didn't Sorry. get struck by, okay, so. I got scared. <laughs> <laughs> three of us, three of us voted for the truck. You vote for the truck? I voted for the truck, yeah. Okay. Who, who first and seconded the motion on the truck? Randy. Randy, okay. Victor, okay. and we all approved it. So, so the question quickly now on the floor is, the fire department is anxious to install a water softener at the fire department so that they can have potable water down there. The, uh, this, this recent thing again caused a problem you know, when you have people using that building and you don't have potable water. Okay, I was drinking the water at the fire station, so you're telling me it's not drinkable? You, you, you should report to the Central Vermont Hospital in the next 24 hours for two. I filled my water bottle and drank it all and I didn't die. Um, I, okay, that's good to know. So it's not as, as much a deal for adults, but if you're continually drinking it, that's why we constantly have to have buying cases and cases of bottled water. Okay. I see. Okay. Yeah. The toilet's like terrible. <laughs> Say no more, and it's better for the it's better for the heating system to have softened water too, and a lot better for the shower. Let's use the money. Everything is better. They're in a new budget year. Yeah, we have oh. we have funds. Their budget, huh? I think they spent like sixty percent of their budget this last mm -hmm. year. Right. So. Yeah. Seventy. So. Seventy. Mm -hmm. First time in history, I think. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, I will make that motion that we purchase a. Uh, the water purchase and install a water softener for the estimate that we yep yep i can send that again if you need it sir well I'll give dorinda probably needs it yeah yeah second so is there a second send you like Victor? Yep. that's okay this is so it's been moved and seconded all in favor all right Okay, in light of the uh, in light of the impending storm, I'm going to adjourn the meeting unless there's something One urgent. Thing, yep. Which I meant to do when we set the tax rate. What is the board's thoughts about extending the first payment due to currently it's as of August 20th? Yeah. Wonder if we extend the first payment to September 20th because I think people are really struggling, and if we send out tax bills next week which they have to go out next week in order for an August 20th date, 
gap that's just mm -hmm. like a okay and we've got the money to to bridge that gap right we're, hoping. <laughs> we're, so. we're using that fund balance little we're by little dorinda <laughs> um, but, but that's what the fund balance is for yeah i'll make that motion Okay, thank you. Second. Nice yawn. The tax, uh, first tax payment is September 20th. Wonderful. Okay, is there a second? Randy, all in favor? Aye, done. All right, That's thank great. you. Okay, we do need to sign. Uh, idea, great idea. Yes. And who seconded that, Randy? Yeah. Okay. And we're going to move everything else to next week. Yep. Um, wait, can I just clarify? Are we having a select board meeting on Tuesday? That's the plan. Yep. Okay. So the vote the week. The well, Eric is still sitting here. Oh, I'm looking to make a public um, thank you to the road crew for all of their work. Uh, thank I'm you. I'm sure on behalf of the whole select board, but I just really appreciate um, you guys have worked very hard and I know that you've had to deal with lots of phone calls and upset people and give and people and just a great job. And please keep it up for another 20 minutes so we can all get home. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Please keep it up for another 20 months <laughs> while well, we recover from it. Okay, everybody, I'm adjourning the meeting. We are out of here. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you all you. for your time Bye. and attention.